Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna cover the topic of intimacy. And the definition for intimacy according to the Oxford language is one, close familiarity or friendship, closeness, two, a private cozy atmosphere, or three, an intimate act, intimacy. Okay, that's the topic of today. Um, the reason why I wanted to cover it is because um, this is mainly a message to like younger people, like the newer generation. I believe I'm Generation X, but I'm speaking of like millennials and Generation Y and Z or whoever. I'm not sure how the categories are categorized, but this message is for younger people because when I was growing up, there wasn't such a, like we didn't have access to pornography as easily as we do now on the internet. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that, and this is something that I kind of recently learned as well, like has that has been a, a growth point in my life, that intimacy, when you're being intimate with someone, essentially you're sharing your soul with them, okay? And that your soul is a big deal. I mean, think about it there's a battle for your soul between god and the devil okay they're both battling for your souls and in the end one of them ends up with your soul okay and the reason why i wanted to bring this to light i was going to hell before and i'll explain that in another video but i repented and god thankfully gave me a chance to again for him to have my soul and that's why it is a big deal like i didn't know this before but it is a big deal your soul and when you share it with someone you're giving them a piece of your soul when you're being intimate with them let's continue the importance of waiting let's refer to the bible okay it's Im it's important to wait number one you're worth the wait and number two it takes time to get to really know someone and you should you should absolutely okay first of all let's see okay there's power in virtue so virtue is if you choose to abstain to abstain entirely or to you know just take your time and wait for marriage there's there's power in virtue Okay, that means keeping your body pure. Let's look to the Bible, for example. I mean, Mark and Luke. So there's power and virtue. Let's, let's see Jesus as an example. Now, Jesus never had a girlfriend. He wasn't married. He never had a girlfriend. So it is assumed that he's never been intimate with anyone. Okay, he died at the age of 33. But during his, his life, he accomplished a lot. I mean, he was sent by God for us and accomplished a lot for the kingdom in his short life here. But during that time, he there's no record of him being intimate or having a girlfriend. And there's, there's power in that. And let's look for the example in the Bible. Mark 5, 25 to 34. Okay, Mark 25 to 34. And a certain woman, we're going to read from the books, Mark and Luke. Okay, Mark was a writer and Luke was a physician. So they both have their own versions of the same story of Jesus's life. Okay, so let's look at Mark 5, 25 to 34. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and saying sayest thou who touched me and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him 
and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Okay, so that's Mark's version of the story. And now let's look at Luke. Okay, Luke 8, 43 to 48. And a woman having an issue of blood. So these are the two versions of the same story, okay? And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all, the, when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. Okay, so those are two versions of the same story but we notice that the word virtue when he refers to the woman just touching his clothes in order to be healed of her her um her blood disease of 12 years he used the word virtue he said in two in both in luke and mark he says i i felt virtue come on me so therefore that is a that is evidence that virtue is is power in the spiritual realm and this is and this is a, the truth that virtue is equal to power in the spiritual realm okay so if your virtue was unjustly affected by someone else be assured god is your vindicator he is the best justice system there is he will then give you equal amount of blessing equivalent to your injustice he also makes you a light that gives hope and comfort to others who have had similar experiences. Jesus turned water into wine, brought the dead back to life, healed the sick, made the blind see, and the, la and the lame walk. There is no record of him having a girlfriend or wife. Intimacy and marriage is fine because it is a covenant or agreement made under God. Okay, so this is the message to young people. Take the time to get to know the person you're going to share your body with, okay? Again, <clears throat> take the time to get to know the person you're going to share your body with. You're putting your love in, you're putting your life in their hands, not only because of STDs or diseases, some fatal, even if protected, things could always go wrong. Do you know this person well enough? to be a good father or mother to your children? Are they trustworthy? Are they always honest with you? Where they are? And are they running around with other people bringing back diseases to you? These are all possibilities, okay? And that's why it's very imperative that you take the time to get to know someone before you share your soul with them. Okay, these are important questions to think about before sharing your soul with someone. When you get married, you're gifting each other with your souls. Let's use Forrest Gump's, um, like life is like a box of chocolates. Okay, so in Hawaii, the tourists like to buy um, chocolate covered macadamia nuts in a box and give those as gifts. Like tourists from Japan or anywhere, it's kind of like a popular gift to take home. So imagine that you finally meet the person of your dreams, the person that you want to marry, okay, and say, your soul, aka box of um, chocolate mac covered macadamia nuts, okay? In this case, um, Forrest Gump said, you never know what you're gonna get. But in this case, it's all the same in the box of chocolate macadamia nuts, okay? You pretty much know like, there's either the milk chocolate, chocolate covered macadamia nuts, there's a dark chocolate, there's one with like, um, uh, crispies inside, there's like, a green tea covered mac chocolate macadamia nuts. Okay, so from the outside box, you know it's gonna all be the same on the inside. So that's what you want. You want to know your person so well that you know what's gonna be on the inside of the box. If your soul was like that box of chocolate, and say you 
took off the wrapper it comes with like a sealed plastic wrapper and then you you open the box and then you you offer everyone a piece of the chocolate and then you finally meet the person of your dreams imagine putting that box back together and then giving it to the person of your dreams you know what i mean like and then they open it and there's like one piece of chocolate there it's like or hopefully a piece of chocolate and it's like oh, thanks you know versus like a sealed wrap brand new box of chocolate you know as your gift aka soul so that's like a just an analogy for you to think about your soul is very important like i didn't realize this either before but it's important there's a battle for it here in the earthly realm like there's a battle for your soul and god wants your soul and the devil wants your soul okay so you have a choice where you want your soul to go and you share your soul with someone when you're intimate with them when your bodies you're sharing your body with them that is the reason why i choose to be celibate now what is the definition of celibacy according to webmed.com it's the practice of not having sex so presently right now in this stage of my life i i'm choosing to be celibate and that's not to have sex at all why why do i choose to be celibate one god shows up more often okay when i ask him for help more answers more of my prayers get answered i have greater protection over my life my family and my friends i get more creative ideas and clarity i get more open doors equivalent to opportunities and he fights my battles Okay, it increases God's presence in my life. So my choice to be celibate, it comes with a lot of these good good things, you know, and that's that's why I choose to be celibate. Okay, and compared to the worry and stress of STDs or pregnancy, I mean choosing not to have sex and you get all of those benefits, I mean to me it's now, you know, um and that's another thing, like alcohol and drugs, it really it really blurs your um like your definitive lines that you should be drawing on these very important topics you know you'll tend to compromise more often that's the word you'll tend to compromise and that's why i don't um drink or do drugs anymore because i compromise a lot in the past and it's always been destructive so yeah i mean that's why i'm so against drinking and and drugs now because i don't want to compromise anymore i mean i just mentioned to you all the good things that comes with you know choosing to walk a right path and how do i how do i know this like what is my basis of knowledge for this okay number one it's the bible as you've already known from previous videos or other things that you've um listened to or studied that we as believers have victory over satan and his demons okay it doesn't mean that we're not going to get attacked and attacked in fact when i became sh stronger in my walk the attacks were more intense and that's because prior to wanting and seeking god this uh satan had my soul basically yeah like i was headed for hell and he had my soul so i think he's most uh upset about the ones that he almost had you know but through jesus and his mercy and the new covenant of grace that god gave me another chance and that's why i'm dedicating my life to him because i'm thankful of that chance you know i seen i seen where i was headed and i i don't want to spend eternity there like there's no way i would want to spend eternity there so i'm thankful hopefully this is going to help people who this is happening to and you're not crazy and there is a spiritual there is a spiritual realm like there's a physical realm that we see with all of our senses and then there's there's a spiritual realm that are things that we can't see with all of our senses but it sometimes crosses over so anyways there's this um demonic attack it's always perverse and gross and it's kind of like a 
a shaking, a ground shaking, okay? And it's like, a, it's in sometimes certain areas, like when you're sleeping and things. So, okay, so this has been happening to me for like five years straight now. And I've moved from different places thinking that it was a specific person, but it's not because the same thing happens everywhere. And I've moved to like five different places now in five years. So the very fact that it's the same thing happening with different people means it's happening in the spiritual realm. Okay, so it's like a perverse shaking. It's like a power trip basically by these like ridiculous demons, right? So anyway, if this is happening to you and there's kind of weird perverse shaking, like you're not alone and just know that you have power over it, that you are more powerful than whatever they're trying to do, which is a weird power trip. Okay, so I made a video earlier about the blood of Jesus. I would, I would watch that if i were you if this is happening to you okay because that's where you're gonna know where your power comes from it comes from jesus jesus did for us on the cross and him being as virtuous and pure as he is um he was full of power okay he did all of the miracles and things that i mentioned earlier and through him you have victory over these types of type of spirits so you can do the thing that i said in the previous video which is to claim decree scripture straight from the bible so in the format of it is written and then you say a spiritual warfare scripture and then you say in the name of jesus because anything that you ask in his name he'll do for you okay and remember i told you there's a lot of factors that affect your power in the spiritual realm such as your purity your repentance okay so you have to make sure that you know you're not holding grudges of people against people like doing you know bad or evil things because that's where your power gets decreased okay so basically the more pure you are the more powerful you are in the spiritual realm and because of jesus's purity he was the all-powerful okay and we have victory through him and his blood so watch that video if this is happening to you but so that's one thing you can do is you can you can use scripture to defeat them and it's not always going to just stop it like abruptly like cut them off but it will diminish okay it's like a like I told you, there's a lot of factors that like that that affect the the power of these things. Okay, but know that Jesus is the all powerful one. Our God is the Almighty God. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end, and He created and is in control of all things. For another way you can have victory over that weird, perverse, like ground shaking, is to plead the blood of Jesus over them. Okay, so you say, um, I plead the blood of Jesus over and if that person so okay i'm not sure if it's like a spirit that inhabits an actual being or if it's just a spirit that's there so you just say i pled through the blood of jesus over that in the name of jesus and because because it's a it's a sinful evil entity okay that when you plead the blood of jesus what does it do it sanctifies it purifies that thing so then it no longer acts in that perverse way. Anything perverse or like evil like and wrong is all, that's all the devil's work, okay? Like I said, in heaven, there's everything good. We're in the in-between, so he's definitely here. Now I understand why he allowed it. This is five years after, and it's been happening continuously, you know? But now I understand why he allows it. It's to purify myself of lust. So I used to struggle with lust before. Like, I used to struggle with lust, basically. And after all of this, like, weird, perverse, like, attacks, I no longer struggle with it. So I don't, I don't think of sex. You know, I don't crave it. I don't need to, like, go out and find someone well I never kind of was like that anyway but um I just I have no sexual desire put it that way so I know that God had to do this or allow it in order to use me because if I wasn't purified of that then he couldn't use me in the way he is now which is to like help other people because I I mean I hope that it's, this isn't happening to other people but in the case that it is this will be helpful to you and I've and while I was going through this, I came across videos just like this that he put in my path to help me through it. So hopefully that this is doing the same for someone else. God purified me so that he could use me, but 
it also keeps me stirred up or motivated to do his work because he can only work through us in a purified state he can't really yeah he can't use us unpurified so in a lot of ways he has to purify us by allowing these things in order to use us to do his work so remember god is in control if he's allowing it what the enemy meant for evil he will use for your good okay god is in control he will use what the enemy meant for evil for your good i promise he does okay and also another key point to remember is that you are worth the weight you are worth the weight you're extremely valuable to god and god loves you more than anything i hope this video is helpful to you see you in the next video